Hello everyone and welcome back. So this time, what do we have? Well, we have a tennis ball and it's being served horizontally. A person is seven and a half feet above the ground when they strike the ball. Um, and they strike the ball smooth ground at B. And it's known that the coefficient of restitution is 0 0.8. Okay. We want to find out what the velocity is um, of the ball just after it strikes the court, as well as what the velocity was initially. Are you going to do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not going to get away from those ever. I keep on telling you this, and I think you keep on thinking that you will escape kinematics one day. You won't. You won't. You'll be like an 80 year old in the old folks' home, and they're going to start asking you how, the, how far the tennis ball is going. You'll be like, I'm too old for this. I'm like, no, kinematics. No. It will it'll haunt you for always. I'm sorry. So, follow these steps and solve this problem. I'm going to let you go off right now, try it on your own, and see how it goes. So, three, two, one, and you're back. So, let's try it out. First off, we have to consider the vertical motion of the falling ball. We can figure out, okay, it fell seven and a half feet. So, from that, we can figure out the amount of time it was in the air, which would be 0.6825 seconds. The second thing we can figure out is the velocity in the y direction just as it hits the wall, ball ground, just before it hits the ground. We can figure out that velocity. Because initially its velocity was zero. It wasn't moving in the y direction. But then it gets accelerated by gravity. And over the full length, it'll finally get to 21.98 feet per second after 0.6825 seconds. And then finally, to figure out the velocity um, initially, what we have to realize is that all that velocity initially was in the x direction. All of it. So we could have said this is like VAX right here. We wanted to put a little x. Oop, I did too much. Okay. A little x right here. That's a lot bigger x than I meant to. <laughs> And so we can use a very simple equation for it because the x velocity is constant while it's dropping. We're just ignoring air resistance. And so we get that at 29.3 feet per second. Okay, now with that, we can start using our coefficient restitution um, and other things to figure out the velocity of the ball just after it rebounds from the ground. So after it rebounds, um, to before it rebounds, we know it's going to be a ratio of 0.7. We know what the velocity of the ball is as it approaches the ground. It's 21.98 feet per second. And so it's going to rebound with a velocity of 15.38 feet per second. We also know that momentum is conserved in the x direction. X being the side wave. If you're wondering, like, wait a second, didn't you say it always connects x with the mass centers? Yeah, but we're also adding in kinematics here, so use the one that makes the most sense. Um, just use your judgment. Be very careful, be consistent. And so what we get is that the velocity afterwards is 29.3 feet per second in the x direction. We have the velocity in the y direction, we have the velocity in the x direction. If we want to, we can take the magnitude and calculate the angle. So that is it. That is the end of our problem. Thank you so very much for listening. I hope this helps you. Oh. And I will see you all next time. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.